Okay, our third speaker of this evening is Jerry Duffy, the General Manager of Global Product Development for GE Lighting. Uh, Mr. Duffy is responsible for GE Lighting's professional product portfolio and direct strategic investments for new product development. Tonight he will share trends in solid state lighting and how it will transform our world. Please welcome Jerry Duffy. Uh, so good evening. Hey, uh, first I'd just like to say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm honored to represent uh, the U lighting industry and uh, in particular the U.S. lighting industry uh, here tonight. Uh, my, my whole career, uh, like everyone else, has been focused on lighting, but maybe, you know, lighting from a different perspective. When I think about lighting, it's always what's above our head and what's in our living room and uh, what's uh, what we see every day when we drive down streets. Um, first, I'd like to uh, just also acknowledge uh, some of what I talk about will stuff be things that uh, Dr. Nakamura talked about, uh, but coming from a slightly different perspective. And I just sort of give a nod to Nakamura-san for the uh, uh, tremendous uh, advancements that he enabled for our lighting industry. And truly, uh, my own personal life is different because of the uh, inventions that he uh, uh, gave us. So let me uh, just say a, a little bit about how I think about light. And you know, there's sort of statistics on lighting and how much energy it uses and uh, how important it is to our economy. But uh, you know, I think for me, why I'm passionate about lighting, why I care about lighting, is, is more captured in the image. It's what it means for all of us and the world we live in, and sort of the idea of banishing the dark. It can be uh, taken for granted easily what our world is like with artificial lighting. But the reality is our world is tremendously different. And uh, as Dr. Betzig pointed out, you know, 400 years ago, uh, we were living with uh, terrible candles and burning, uh, burning animal fat in little puddles uh, to, to see at to see at night. Uh, so it's a tremendously important uh, thing for our world to have artificial light. And that's how I think about it. I think about what I do and what many of us do is make the world a better place every day with light. Hey, just, uh, just a real super quick retrospective. And the main point of this is, uh, you know, since, since Edison, since he started uh, with an artificial light, uh, electric light, there's been a series of inventions, right? There's, there's 100, 100 years of people trying to push to make a more efficient light source, to make better color. And you can talk through all of these sort of uh, different technologies, but you know, some version of physics, often material science, which enabled uh, uh, a giant steps forward in terms of the efficiency of lighting. What, uh, what is interesting, though, in this chart is fundamentally each of the event inventions on this page, or each of these advances, never really obsoleted what was before it. So never, in no case did anybody ever really get rid of the incandescent light bulb uh, from 150 years ago. Um, certainly fluorescent or other uh, technologies have carved out their own space, but nothing's obsoleted it. And so when I look at solid state lighting, and in particular uh, uh, Nakamura-san's invention that he enabled What's tremendous is it really will, from our perspective, my perspective, basically obsolete every other lighting technology that, that, that's existed. And, uh, you know, this chart, this is uh, similar to some of the efficiency uh, charts that were shown, although I've, uh, I've recalibrated it sort of at a system level um, after, you, after you take the raw uh, efficiency of the LED, but feed it through its uh, power supplies and optics, et cetera. But the point of this chart is that red line and the absolutely rock solid uh, uh, predictability of the improvement of the LED and as well as what's probably as much important as the cost of the LED in terms of uh, you know, how, how much does it cost to make a lumen of light out of an LED um, and that progress. And what it really is also showing is every single technology that existed before fundamentally is gonna get eclipsed or and is already eclipsed with it. So that brings with sort of uh, with it sort of uh, tremendous implications. 
So another way of looking at the world. This is uh, just a look at uh, LED penetra sales penetration of LEDs in our inner lighting market and solid state lighting in our market. So uh, today I look at our own business. We're not quite 50% of our business is LED, but it's approaching 50%. Uh, and giant, uh, you know, giant customers are switching to LED for its uh, advantages. The interesting thing on this chart, really, it's kind of a, uh, it's a, a dry chart, right? It's just a bar chart. But the implications for what this means for our world and our industry are tremendous. This is, you know, uh, literally hundreds of millions of billions of dollars of factories of old things going away and new factories starting up and coming up. It's a complete transformation of the lighting industry. If you look at the lighting and the, all the traditional players, um, you know, I won't, I won't go through the list of them, but there weren't that many. There were three or four big lighting companies. Um, all of those companies are going through an unbelievable transition, uh, and new players are showing up. And there's startup companies uh, coming in, startup companies going out, old companies changing. But this is an unbelievable transformation. And I would say, just as a final note, every bit as important as when we think of things like digital photography or digital music or any of those things, this is a transition that's uh, fundamentally changing our world. Just, I, I'll just say some of the same things, you know, tremendous environmental impact, tremendously green. The one thing I would personally, because I'm so deeply in the lighting industry, uh, always want to highlight is, you know, if you look, study how can I make the world a greener place, and I can do things like put in wind farms, I can put in solar, uh, solar panels, et cetera. If I look at how much I have to invest to just switch to a more energy efficient lighting source, it's, it's sort of, it, I can do it, save money, and also make the world a much greener place than the amount of investment it takes to invest in some of those other alternative generating technologies. So you, of course, I'm a huge champion of, I can't help it, I'm a, a believer in lighting. It's a tremendous opportunity for our world to uh, go better just by making these changes. I want to just take a few slides and talk about uh, the spectral impacts of uh, LED. So great, it's, it's more efficient and uh, it's going to make the world a better place, greener. What's also interesting as someone who cares about lighting is with LED we can make fundamentally a, a much more control over the spectrum of light and how we humans perceive light. And certainly how we perceive it is as important as the light source itself. So this is just a, 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 some kind of color science work that we've been doing, which you know, many of you probably know most of the color metrics or many of the color metrics that are commonly used in the lighting industry date from the 1930s. Studies of how humans perceive light in the 1930s are still numbers that we often uh, quote when we talk about lighting. And the reality is those don't really capture how we all perceive light and think about light. So in this case, we looked at light and said, uh, what actually, how do we uh, perceive color and how, what, what do we prefer in color? And it's just those three different sources, uh, you know, a, a standard incandescent light with some uh, spectrum notched out of it, a standard s uh, LED product, and then what an LED product could be. And these are, this is not a product on the market yet. But on virtually every category, when people are given side-by-side -side comparisons, you know, multiple rooms, multiple choices, they come back and say, hey, this, this version of a bulb is something I actually prefer. Um, and, and the, the uh, piece that I was going to just highlight is, you know, on a traditional metric, which is uh, called color rendering index, uh, you know, this bulb looks better, uh, but when you, because it has a higher, higher CRI, uh, but this bulb actually with a lower CRI is vastly preferred, and it's because it really has to do with the metrics are bad, right? The, the metrics aren't very good, especially in an SSO, uh, uh, an LED world. So actually, I'm very uh, excited that we can make better products um, with just the advent of this technology. Uh, Nakamura-san mentioned uh, the impact on circadian rhythms, uh, very similar. Uh, there is certainly melatonin suppression occurs most in uh, uh, blue, but another opportunity with LED is really to control that spectrum much more uh, precisely. And when you need to suppress melatonin, give high, high lux blue light, uh, but when you wish to uh, uh, not suppress melatonin, uh, shorter, uh, longer wavelengths to do that. 
And then finally, uh, you know, I, I've, sitting here in Washington, I wanted to give a little nod to uh, especially the Department of Energy. They've been incredibly valuable for us in, in pushing the uh, solid state lighting. Um, this is work that they help support, but one of the challenges in LED uh, has been a good red. Just having a, a very good red, the, the, you know, the very typical problem is uh, you, you, to get red, you end up leaking a lot of energy out into the infrared, um, which is not useful for us. But this is a, a work that they supported to create a red light emitting phosphor, and what it translates into is you know, m better color, better reds, and higher, uh, higher efficiency. So it's a, a, just a nod to uh, the DOE and the work that they've uh, helped support for us. So let me, uh, this kind of veers from what, how we traditionally think of lighting now. And this is an attempt to say, uh, you always say, what, what does the future look like? What does the future look like in lighting? And uh, trying to see, try to see the future as a complicated thing, right? When you look back, uh, it, it always looks sort of linear. It looks like A led to B led to C. Uh, but when you look forward, it looks like a whole world of possibilities and, and narrowing down to what it's going to be is, uh, is much harder to see. I think there's a few fundamental trends, though, that are absolutely you know, rock solid we can count on. And that's the digital transformation that we all see from well, whether it's our cell phones, but everything else is, is happening in the world and it's happening to lighting. And we can see and feel that in lighting. So intelligent, some kind of intelligence buried in the lighting is uh, sort of almost a given from my perspective. And we will continue to see uh, SSL efficiency and cost, efficiency go up and cost come down, which really means that, uh, you know, there's this huge opportunity as that happens to, to uh, uh, bury this intelligence in light sources that are changing all the time. So those are sort of fundamental trends. What, how I think about this world and how we, we think about it is, Lighting is going to change dramatically, is already changing dramatically to solid state. As that's happening, uh, we have the uh, ability to build in a lot of intelligence into the lighting. Uh, we can build sensors into those lighting. We can very, really cheaply build uh, communications, radios into the lighting and start uh, not only controlling the lighting, but collecting information that can help us make uh, facilities and, and other places run better. So I think the key, the key points on this, though, are lighting is everywhere. You know, there's, in this room, there's probably 300 lights somewhere in the, in the room. Uh, it's powered. It's always, it's got energy going to it. And uh, its location high in the sky is actually helpful for a lot of reasons. Um, so we can do a lot with that. And then, you know, the final point on this slide is of the installed base, actually not that much has converted yet. So we're at this in incredibly opportune time to put a lot of uh, energy, a lot of intelligence into the lighting um, as the world transitions because of the energy efficiency of LED. So let me, uh, let me I'm just gonna talk about a, a couple of ideas, a couple of things that uh, are, are of interest. And the first is probably not a very uh, surprising concept, right? We can certainly modulate with, with LED, we can modulate the light easily and transmit information over the light. And you can uh, envision uh, fairly interesting projects where you're, you're using the light to transmit large amounts of data fast, uh, sort of very local, you know, localized. Um, so, you, you know, you can have your laptop connected to the light or connected to the internet using signals on top of the light. I'm going to talk about a, a little bit more of a, a, a narrower use case which is the idea of using information on the light to identify each individual bulb or, or light in a, in a facility and transmit information about its, its location. And so it becomes an opportunity as you transition the lights to LED to also bury some uh, just highly precise local information in where uh, you might be in a facility. And w how you might use that information is uh, you know, there's a world of ideas on how you might use that information. Just like we have a GPS outside and there's GPS satellites up above us all the time transmitting signals and our phone triangulates on those signals, the same thing it will happen with LED, right? We can put that signal on every fixture and each fixture looks like a GPS satellite transmitting information which we can localize on. And, you know, the interesting thing is how do you use that? I was talking to, to someone 
to this evening, but giant buildings like uh, uh, hospital buildings where people frequently get lost um, just trying to find a spot in the building. This pr provides a way to go uh, make that happen. And then, uh, you know, a final thing uh, to talk about is, well, what does it mean on outdoor? And we're probably, have, we've done a lot of thoughts about the outdoor space. And again, it sort of veers from, well, what is lighting? You know, and lighting is photons for sure. Um, it's, it's energy and green, but it's also this opportunity to now embed uh, more intelligence into it. And we've done a, m multiple people are looking at the street light in particular and saying, wow, there's this opportunity to put more in that street light as we make the transition to LED. So we're, we're adding now sensors and communications uh, radios to street lights and then using information collected from those to really feed back to cities what's happening on their streets. And uh, maybe just to give a few examples, you know, if you go out and talk to cities and cities everywhere, traffic and parking are an enormous problem. Uh, in fact, there's some statistics that float around that say like 20% of the cars in a big city are actually constantly circling just trying to find a parking spot. You know, they're just trying to find their way to a spot. And so they, if you talk to a city and say, how, could, how can we help? What could we do different? You say, well, how could we solve something like the parking problem? And so when we go and put an LED street, street light in, we're adding sort of c cameras and video analytics to say, collect information on where p parking spots are, how traffic is flowing through the city, and then providing that information back to city managers, and then you know, ultimately collecting that data sort of in a big data analytics way to say, how do I, how do I learn from these streetlights what traffic patterns are doing, say, on the edge of the city, to say, how do I change what's going on you know, with my traffic signals and how I direct traffic through the whole entire city? How do I tell people ahead of time where open spots are and tell them this is where you need to go. This is where your parking spot will be in the city. Um, and it, it goes from there. You know, we've talked to New York City, and New York City has a, something like 100 people die every year in New York City by walking into a pedestrian crosswalk when there's cars coming. They want to know how do I find those people and how do I tell those cars ahead of time or how do I signal to people you're about, you know, you're about to get hit or you're about to hit somebody stop the car, do something different. And so we're you know, leveraging the lighting to go make that happen. Uh, so it's, to me, the, the point of this is uh, lighting can be something so much more than what we thought it was before. You know, it's fabulous already to banish the dark, but I think the world we're turning into is, is lighting that's truly intelligent, that really helps us uh, uh, make the world a better place. So, you know, finally, that's how I think about lighting and what I think of the tremendous revolution that we're in right now, every bit as big as uh, every other digital transition that's happening. And, uh, I, you know, I look forward to uh, uh, lighting, the pedestrian old version of lighting uh, sort of being an exciting and uh, interesting place for a long time to come. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>